we have got the brand new M2 MacBook Air here today, and this is the higher spec model. So we're gonna do a quick unboxing, some first impressions, and a comparison to my current machine of choice, the M1. So this is my M1 MacBook Air. This is the M2 MacBook Air. And this is my currently unopened M1 Pro MacBook Pro that I've never I've never seen, I've never touched one or used one of these kind of new M1 Pro MacBooks yet, uh, but it's here. So you might as well do comparisons between all three. So this model is the uh, higher spec model, like I mentioned, with eight gig of RAM and uh, 512 gig of SSD storage. I know there's been some issues with the 256 gig SSD storage, which we'll uh, get onto in a moment. And like most people have done, I've gone for the, so I've just gone for the midnight option because it's a new color and it looks kind of cool, so might as well. So, woo. Oh, I like the finish already. I can see that. It looks beautiful color-wise. It's definitely like a blue, more blue than black, I would say. It really is more blue than black. I mean, you can see it in the in the footage there. We've also got the MagSafe cable to match here in the same color. The upgraded model does come with the uh, dual USB-C charger, but to be honest, I wouldn't be using this anyway. I would use the Anchor uh, charger that I've got. I'll, um, I'll put a link down below, but it has, I think it's two or three USB-C ports on it as well as USB-A so I could basically charge my laptop, my phone and my watch all at once without needing you know different chargers. So this this is a good step in the right direction. All we care about is the stickers, which are like damn impossible to get out of the box. Okay, the stickers, which also match the same midnight blue color. I guess if you stuck it to the laptop itself, you couldn't really tell the difference. No, it looks just looks, looks like transparent on here. Ooh. Love that noise. Oh, Ooh, keyboard looks. You've got a much larger top row of function keys, the power key, the uh, touch ID key. They're full size keys rather than the smaller keys. To use British English as the main language, press the return key. Yes, I will. Okay, so in terms of size, let's just have a quick look at comparing the size here. And they are pretty much oh they are identical pretty much identical from a like a footprint point of view in terms of how much space it actually takes on your desk they are i'd say that they're, they're, that's the same that feels the same to me so the one thing that i did think about was which was kind of concerning to me so if you look at the macbook air design here it starts off thick at the back and then works its way to being fairly thin at the front however it's very very difficult to see this but when you actually place them down on a desk that taper edge design, all it really means is the, the laptop is ever so slightly leaning up. There's like a an angle on the keys, so the keys are ever so slightly leaning towards you, which means actually the uh, yeah, people thinking that they're, they're going to rest their palms on here and that's going to hurt. That feels basically the same because it's no further up off the, or higher off the desk, really. I mean, it, it's like a... That's not even a measurement. That that feels exactly the same to me. But the one thing I will tell you just straight away, the whole fingerprints thing is a thing. I literally just got, got this out of the box. And you can see this, I mean, my, my M1 is worn away where I've been using it so much. If I just hold this up to the camera, you can see that it's had some wear and tear just because it's, you know, it's, it's, I've been literally using this every single day. You can see from the top down camera, the, the, the kind of top of the Mac's got you know, dust and fingerprints and a few scratches on it. Yes, it has. But this has only been out of the box for, what, like five minutes. And already you can see there's some greasy, I guess, fingerprint marks. It, it does look, it looks phenomenal. Like, I really like the color. That looks so, so incredible. I love the kind of really rich blue, deep blue color. It looks darker in real life. I will say that. So in the videos, when you put it under light, that looks like really kind of shiny blue, but uh, it's almost purple. It looks much darker but it's definitely got that tinge of blue all the time uh, so yeah what i would say is if you're maybe you carry around a, a microfiber cloth with you just to wipe it down let's do numbers okay ready numbers oh, that's that's significantly faster in terms of using it i would definitely say so that's numbers Oh, 
Again, noticeably faster. This feels rapid. I would definitely say that after using this Mac at the moment, the, the M2 feels fast. First impressions here. I love the curved edges on the screen here. Probably can't see it too much, but on the uh, on the M1, you've got sharp, square, 90 degree, degree corners. Whereas on the M2, you have these rounded edges. They, they look so much better. Obviously you've got the bezel there, yes, which I understand is a bit of Marmite for a lot of people, but I like those rounded edges. They they just look like it's been been thought out and just, just mm, loving the M2 right now. This is a, a good decision. I spent some good money here. So I'm gonna get started with downloading these uh, benchmark testing tools as well as Final Cut Pro, which I'm just downloading here, just ready to edit this actual video. But in the meantime, a question I've been asked quite a few times already is around the external monitor capability because one of the downsides about the M2 MacBook Air and the M1 had it too, was that it can only drive a single external display. You can't drive two displays with it. So the question I'm going to answer though is whether the M2 MacBook Air can drive a 49 inch 5120 by 1440 screen like this one just behind me. Oh. And it works perfectly. So this is 5120 by 1440 resolution. Also with the MacBook Air's screen open and working. So you can have two screens by doing this. So you can go up to 120 hertz on the MacBook Air, the M2 MacBook Air. So basically it's the exact same as the M1 MacBook Air. Bit of a shame, but it is what it is. Okay, let us go on to the benchmark test now. Let us open the M1 Pro MacBook Pro. So we've got this one to kind of compare against as well. And firstly, let's just do disk speed because of the huge controversy around the disk speed model of the 256 gig model. This doesn't make sense. I'm getting consistently higher read and write speeds on the M1 512 gig MacBook Air than the M2 512 gig MacBook Air. And we've just had a 2000 megabytes per second versus, sorry, 2049 versus 2731. There's big, big differences here in terms of read and write speeds. It's... More investigation is required. This does not feel right at all. Out of interest, let's just compare that to the M1 Pro MacBook Pro. There's too many pros in this. Whoa, okay, now we're trucking. Wow, wow. <sighs> in terms of write speed, wow, that's just nuts. <laughs> This is the order we go in, in terms of how fast the machine's working. This is the order we need to go. So we're going, the slowest is the M2 MacBook Air, and this is on the 512 gig SSD. The next up is the M1 MacBook Air on the 512 gig SSD. And on the M1 Pro MacBook Pro, we are at almost 6,000, we are over 6,000 megabytes per second write speed and over 5,000 megabytes per second read. So that is twice basically as fast as the M2, so the M1 <laughs> MacBook Air, because the M2 is slowest. That doesn't make any sense. So you can just see here, we've got, uh, this is the M1. We've got, in, we're getting 25, 25, 35. And then this is the M2, 23, 33, 23, 76, 25, almost 26. And the read speeds are relatively similar. So 2769, and we are going 2028, 20, 29. Okay, that's gone up that time. 29, that's also been 29. So similar read speeds, but the write speeds definitely I'm seeing 23 to you know, 26, and that's on the M1. So the M1's still getting much better write speeds from what I'm seeing. And then the, yeah, damn, the, uh, the M1 Pro is just flying past incredibly fast speed so um so yeah not quite as dramatic as i first thought maybe the uh the m2 mac was doing something in the background but still seeing relatively low write speeds on the m2 and these are both on the 512 chips as well so just uh, fyi okay let's do an audio test now <laughs> Wow. 
Okay, so this is cool. We've got quite a nice progression going on here. We've got the M1 MacBook Air, which sounds pretty good. It's, it's a good sound. But when you compare it to the M2, it does sound a little bit tinny. I wouldn't normally say that. Like the, the speakers do actually sound really, really good. But when you put them side by side with the M2, there's just a bit more oomph, a bit more bass tone from the M2 speakers, or the, probably because there's, there's four speakers rather than two. However, when you move this over to the M1 Pro MacBook Pro, it sounds like it's in a different league. There's so much more going on. You can hear more details to the audio. There's more bass in the audio. It feels like there's a, I mean, a proper like speaker system sat on the desk there, which is, is quite incredible. This is making the decision a lot more complicated. Let's talk Cinebench score and let's talk single core scores as well. So the M2 was about 5% faster than the M1 and the M1 Pro came out around about the same as the M1, which Kind of makes sense since it's a single core of the same processor. Now next we have the multi-core Cinebench scores with the M2 scoring a 15% improvement over the M1 and the M1 Pro scoring a huge 42% improvement over the M2. So the M2 slightly better, M1 Pro still way way better. Now over to Geekbench and we get some strange results here. The M2 Air being 8% faster than the M1 Air but the M1 Pro being about as fast as the M1, which is odd, but we continue. Now, multi-core scores, 20% higher on the M2 Air and a further 35% higher the M1 Pro. So that looks good, kind of to be expected, to be fair. Now, when running the graphical tests on Geekbench, for OpenCL, I'm seeing 40% faster on the M2 and a further 30% faster on the M1 Pro. So the Pro basically is at 70% faster over the M1, which is just nuts. I mean, it kind of makes sense because there's a big difference between the two. Now for Metal on Geekbench, we're very, very similar. 40% faster on the M2 and a further 27% faster on the M1 Pro, which again, makes sense because the M2 and the M1 Pro have an added media engine, which the M1 doesn't have. Now, lastly, GFX Metal. Now this tests the kind of graphical capability a little bit more by running through various like complex simulations and it notes the maximum frames per second that each machine is capable of in, in like each scenario it's playing ahead. So here the M2 was around 35% faster than the M1, which is pretty impressive. And the M1 Pro was a further 55% faster than the M2. That's a huge, huge difference. Now, so these tests, as far as like benchmarks go, are kind of to be expected. Like M1 is the worst, of course. M2 is slightly better because it's the newer machine. And M1 Pro is, of course, the best since it's like double the price of the M1. With an exception, though. Like those disk write speeds are definitely not normal. And they were picked up also by Max Tech back when the M2 was announced recently, but they said it only applies to the 256 gig SSD and not the 512 gig SSD. So my question to you, if you are watching this and you own a M2 MacBook Air or Pro, run the Blackmagic disk speed test and post down in the comments what you're getting. I'm, I'm super interested to find out here because to me, it does look like the M1 Air is faster than the M2, because that's not the only unusual result that's come out of this testing, and we'll get onto that more in just a moment, and you'll see why. Because let's talk editing now. So I'm off to edit the actual video you're watching you know, right now, and I'll be back in the flash of movie magic to tell you how well it worked. Okay, so the video is pretty much all finished up, apart from obviously this section which we're adding in here. I've got the M2 MacBook Air, the camera and the microphone that you can probably hear from right now. And I've got the M1 MacBook Air and the microphone and cameras and everything that you can see right here. So I'll switch between them as you do. What I will say is this is definitely an improvement over the M1 MacBook Air, I feel. Specifically, if you're using this to do light video editing work. Like what I will say is that generally when using the M2 MacBook Air, it, it feels snappy. Like the applications launch much faster than they do, I feel, on the M1. Putting them side by side, they definitely do launch faster as well. Now, a friend of mine who has his own YouTube channel has that base spec MacBook Air. So we tested the exact same footage on this and, and on all of these machines. And the results were the M1 MacBook Air exported this 10 minute 4K clip in five minutes and 11 seconds. The base spec M2 MacBook Air that I don't have here exported in five minutes and 12 seconds. And the top spec M2 MacBook Air, this one here, exported in five minutes and 12 seconds. <laughs> what? That literally makes no sense. Like the M1, the base M2, and the higher spec M2 
all export the exact same footage at the exact same time. I genuinely don't know what to do right now. I'm actually considering cancelling my second Mac, uh, MacBook Pro, MacBook Pro, my, my M2 MacBook Air order, because why pay £1,600 or so for a MacBook Air, which is basically the same, if not slower, in some instances, than the M1 MacBook Air. My advice to you right now is if you have the M1, stick with the M1 or go straight to the M1 Pro if you really need to upgrade. Only get the M2 if you want the, the new midnight color, which of course is a thing, new midnight color. Look at those fingerprints, that's horrendous. <laughs> uh, you know, you've got, you've got the upgraded webcam, the screen, the audio, but you get that light form factor that you don't get in the MacBook Pro. Now, if you're dead set on getting the M2, but you're not sure which M2, the base spec or the higher spec, then I will leave a link down below to watch Mark's video where he runs those exact same tests on his base spec M2 Air. So you can kind of very easily tell for yourself if the base spec performs any better or any worse than the higher spec M2 Air. Now, next up, why not check out my review on this insane 49 inch ultra wide screen behind me here? And I'll see you there. Cheers.